Can you hear me? Oh my gosh, yeah, I can hear you. All right, cool. What's that? All right, my question. Um, so the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm a Christian, so I was just wondering, like, why you don't think that babies are born in sin? Well, that that verse, because what is what is sin, right? It's a transgression of the law. And so if all babies, like here, here would be a question. What law, because do you believe a baby is a sinner in his mother's womb? Um, I guess I haven't really thought about that. I, I believe that like we all inherit sin because we're all like under Abraham. Um, so like it, sin began in the garden and it was just like passed on to us like from there. Well, uh, Romans 7, 9, Paul, because Paul would have been born a sinner too, right? Yes. And if you're born a sinner, does it not mean you're born spiritually dead? Yes. In Romans chapter 7, verse 9, Paul actually mentions a time period in his life before he spiritually died that he was spiritually alive. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely, I didn't want to like, I don't want to debate. I was just like curious, like why you believe that? Because, I mean, I was born and raised Catholic, um, but I am now like a Bible believing Christian. And, you know, I, I had like my adult baptism and everything. But um, yeah, I still believe that. I believe like God's merciful. And like if a baby were to die before like it believes, I believe that God would like, you know, God's not going to punish that baby. Same with like uh, how you said, um, like you have to be baptized. Like I don't believe that like if you gave your life to Christ, but you didn't have time to get baptized, like obviously God isn't going to condemn you. Like it, baptism isn't a requirement for salvation. Well, uh, yeah, Romans 7, 9 though, that's why I would believe that babies aren't born spiritually dead because – if Paul was spiritually alive, how was he ever spiritually alive before he spiritually died if you're born spiritually dead? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not like super familiar with that verse, but so wait, do you believe you believe that you have to be baptized? Um, like baptism is like essential for salvation? Yeah, you know how... You know how like you and I both believe that Jesus's blood was shed for the forgiveness of sins and you need the forgiveness of sins, right? So you need the blood of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. In Acts 2.38, it uses the same Greek uh, sentence where in Matthew 26, 28, Jesus said, this is my blood, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And in mm -hmm. Acts 2.38, he says, whoever, or he says, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the same. So I, I would agree that you need the remission of sins, which comes through the blood of Jesus, but you contact the blood of Jesus when you're baptized. But like, so like grace is like a free gift, right? Like given to us from God. So like, if you don't get to be baptized, are you saying like that you're not saved? <laughs> like what if you died before you get baptized? Well, ultimately, then, if somebody died and they're on their way to get baptized, ultimately, that judgment's up to God. But I only know what the Bible says. And, um, like, check this out. Could I could I show you two verses or mention two verses? Mm -hmm. And it talks about being saved by grace, which I agree we are saved by grace. But in Ephesians 2, 5, it says we're saved by grace the moment that we're made alive together with Jesus, which... Mm -hmm. If you can pinpoint the exact moment you're made alive together with Jesus, then you can pinpoint the exact moment you're saved by grace, right? Yeah. So Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13 says that we're made alive together with Jesus when we're baptized. Oh no, am I still on here? Yeah. I was trying to um, pull up my Bible app to look up that verse, <laughs> but it won't let me go out I'll of the open. life. Um, that's okay. Um, can you read that verse one more time? Yeah. 
It's Ephesians 2, 5 says we're saved by grace. The moment we're quickened with Christ, that's what the King James Version says, but it means made alive with Jesus. So it's, ba it's basically when it says you're made alive together with Jesus, it's basically just saying you're forgiven under the New Testament. That's basically all it means. Right. But which wasn't that like Christ, like that was his like, like act on the cross. Like that's what gives us the opportunity to be like with him. And like when we repent and like come into agreement with what he says. Um, and I do believe like baptism is a command um from god and that we should be baptized like we need to obey him um but like i don't know that just doesn't seem like a merciful god to like like i'm I'm thinking of my own walk and like like i said i was catholic i like went through the whole thing and then like i can pinpoint the moment like i came under christ and it wasn't like the moment i was baptized when i was baptized it felt great but like i remember the moment I was saved and when like God really like you know took a hold of my heart and everything um but so if, I don't know if you were made alive before being baptized then how would a person because if you're already made alive oh the other verse that I was going to was Colossians 2 12 and 13 and that verse says that we're made alive together with Jesus when we're baptized so mm -hmm. but like if you're already alive then how can you be made alive through being baptized if you're already alive? Well, doesn't the Bible is, I don't know, I don't remember the exact verse, but it talks about like the baptism by fire and water. So like it's two separate baptisms, basically like baptism by the spirit and baptism by water. Well, the baptism in water would be the one baptism, like Jesus said, go make all disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's water baptism. Yeah. But I believe like we're baptized by the Spirit as well. Right? Like you believe that? No. It's in the Bible. Um, I wish I could hold on. No, I know, I know the, I know the passage you're talking about. But that was a promise to the apostles, and a lot of people confuse the baptism of fire with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus explained in the very next verse, or it was, I'm sorry, John the Baptist, and John the Baptist explained in the very next verse. I think it's Luke chapter three, and he says the fire is actually a reference to unquenchable fire that will burn up the chaff on the day of judgment. Um, I'm thinking of first Corinthians 12, 13. It says for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Drew, mm -hmm. Jew or Greek, um, slave or free. I'm sorry. It's like one 30 in the morning where I'm at. I'm so tired. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is the baptism into the body of Christ by the spirit. Right. But that's also, believe it or not, that is a reference to water baptism. And I could explain why. Uh, sure. So like, for example, Acts chapter 18, verse eight, many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. And that was the same baptism under consideration in first Corinthians 12, 13 that Paul is referencing. But when it says by one spirit, we are all baptized, whether Jew or Gentile, right? That's the one baptism that's commanded by Jesus to all nations. He said, go to all nations, teach them, baptize them. So the baptism for Jew and Gentile is the one mentioned in first Corinthians 12, 13. But when it says by one spirit, we're all baptized, that could mean two things. It could mean one because Hebrew, the book of Hebrews talks about sacrifices, like animal sacrifices, it said, mm -hmm. which are offered by the law. But the law itself doesn't offer the sacrifices. So when it says that sacrifices are offered by the law, that means by the instructions of the law. It was people offering sacrifices, but by the instructions of the law, but it says by the law. So when it says by one spirit, we're all baptized, that means by the instructions of one spirit, we are all baptized in one body. And then it could also mean that because Acts chapter two talks about those who were water baptized and it says that they were added to the church, which the church is the body. According to the Bible, the church is the body. Mm -hmm. And so all that would mean is that the Holy Spirit is involved in placing the believer at baptism into the body of Christ. Got you. Okay. Um, did we talk about Ephesians? Like by uh, saved by grace 
through faith. Oh, well, right before, because uh, Acts or Ephesians 4, 5 says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So the Ephesians were baptized with the one of baptism. And you could read about the conversion of the Ephesians in Acts chapter 19, and they were water baptized. Acts chapter 19, verse 5, they were water baptized. And so Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 is right after Ephesians 2, 5. And Ephesians 2, 5 mentioned being made alive together with Jesus. And Paul, who taught the Ephesians, taught that you're made alive together with Jesus when you're baptized in Colossians 2, 12 and 13. So mm-hmm. when when Paul mentioned in Ephesians 2, 5, being made alive together with Jesus, that would have brought to their remembrance the time that they were made alive together with Jesus, which is when they were water baptized. Yeah. I got you. I definitely feel like I need to like do a little bit more research like I felt like I really like knew everything and I just don't feel like I have like a good like defense but like that Ephesians uh 2 8 through 9 like God's word says that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ Mm -hmm. um and not like of our own efforts like that to me just really feels like you know like the work has been done like we are saved by grace through our faith and through like repenting um and you know like we don't have to do anything else but like god does like he wants us to do things like he commands us to do other things like you know the commandments and like baptism is a command but it's not like in my mind a requirement for salvation but um yeah i I feel like there's more that i need to like learn i'm still like a new believer so Mm -hmm. um I definitely will do some research, but thank you for like your insight. Yeah, no problem. And also my, just my only recommendation, like when, cause you said you're going to look at Ephesians 2, 8, 9, which I encourage mm-hmm. that and I'll look at it too. But you just have to remember two things when you're looking at that verse. Um, one, you have to remember that the Ephesians, according to verse five, he says they were saved by grace. The Cause it says we're saved by grace through faith, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But then he pinpoints the moment they were saved by grace in verse five and says that's when they were made alive together with Jesus, mm-hmm. which is a reference to Colossians 2, 12 and 13 when they were baptized. But also it says they're saved by grace. But we also have to remember when it says they're saved by faith is Ephesians 4, 5 says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So mm-hmm. even though you're reading about them being saved by grace, ac- according to Ephesians 4, 5, that actually includes the one baptism. Yeah. Oh, that girl, Faith, uh, she just had a really good question. Was the thief on the cross baptized? I don't know why I didn't think of that. <laughs> well, the thief, the thief, he didn't die under the new covenant because the new covenant didn't go into effect until after Jesus rose from the dead. Like, for example, the thief mm-hmm. didn't believe Jesus rose the third day because the thief was dead for three days before Jesus even rose. But we know under the New Testament, we have to believe in the third day resurrection. Mm-hmm. So he died under the Old Testament and we live under the New Testament. And another thing, too, is people say he wasn't baptized. Like, obviously, he didn't get down from the cross and get baptized. But how how do you know he wasn't baptized before he got nailed to the cross? Which I'm not saying he was. It doesn't matter either way because he died under the Old Testament law and Jesus was face to face to forgive him. But I just find it super interesting that people say with confidence, the thief on the cross wasn't baptized, which I know he wasn't once he was nailed to the cross, but we don't know anything about his life before he was nailed to the cross. Huh. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to hop off and go to bed. Um, But yeah, just thanks for like preaching good news and yeah, keep doing what you're doing. (laughs) I appreciate that. Well, I hit the follow button. So if you follow back, I think then we'd be able to send a message and then uh, maybe talk more about this. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks. Right on. God bless you as you search for the truth. So have a nice night. You too. Bye.